What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review, and today I'm going to rank the Conjuring Universe movies. I've just recently seen Annabelle Comes Home, so now I feel like I can do a, a uh, accurate ranking of the Conjuring Universe movies. So there's been seven movies in the Conjuring Universe. You've had two Conjuring movies, three Annabelle movies, and then you've also had, uh, what is it, The Nun and The Curse of La Llorona. So, I'm going to start at seven, at the worst and work my way up to the best. So here we go. Number seven is the first Annabelle movie. The first Annabelle movie was not a good movie at all. It was boring. They took a neat concept and made something really boring out of it, which was a bummer, which was a bummer. Yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely really wanted to like the first Annabelle. It just, I couldn't, I couldn't like it. it it was boring, it was predictable, and when you were finally able to kind of put the pieces together on what was going on, by that point you didn't care. The characters were not interesting. This was, while it wasn't like as, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, it wasn't as guilty of the fake jump scares as the new Annabelle is, Annabelle Comes Home, it was also, at the same time, a movie that was designed to have jump scares. Jump scare after jump scare after jump scare. The whole scene is gonna set up a jump scare. So the first Annabelle, not a good movie. It's number seven. <clears throat> number six, The Curse of La Llorona. Another movie that wasn't good. This felt like a um, like a student movie, right? This felt like a, like a college student preparing, he's a film major, preparing to be a major director. This feel, and this is his, this was his, his senior movie that he was making, you know, that, this feels like a really good student project. That's what it felt like to me. I've seen better stuff on, I've seen better fanfic on YouTube. Better fan films. I've seen better fan films on YouTube than The Curse of La Llorona. The Curse of La Llorona is another one of those movies that was designed for jump scares. The Conjuring Universe itself is actually really guilty of this. But those upper echelon Conjuring movies don't rely on the jump scare. The bottom ones do. So, The Curse of La Llorona, not a good movie. It didn't even have a good production feel to it. The production value felt low. Everything about this movie just felt cheap. Wasn't as boring as Annabelle, so I put it above Annabelle. Still not a good movie. So The Curse of La Llorona is six. Number five is the most recent one, Annabelle Comes Home. Again, it's like I said in my review, this could have been called Jump Scare the Movie. It's a 90 minute movie, and for 70 minutes, it was all about, it was all about setting up the jump scare, and then having the jump scare, and then moving on to the next scenario that sets up the jump scare, and then having the jump scare. It was nice having the warns in the beginning of the movie, they were in it briefly at the end as well. Um, the whole middle part of the movie, uh, you had her daughter and her, and her sitters. And, like I said, it was just jump scare the movie. Let's set up the jump scare, let's have a jump scare, let's move on to the next scene. Not until you get to the last 15, 10, 20 minutes, somewhere in that range, do you actually get real threat and Annabelle comes home. The rest is just about the cheap scares. So Annabelle comes home is number five. Number four, so, so five, six, seven, I look at those honestly as kind of... I don't know. Six and seven are bad movies. Um, kind of four and five um, are, are, are movies that are just just meh, right? They're not bad movies. So Annabelle Comes Home isn't a bad movie, but it's just meh. It, it just right. So number four is The Nun. I know a lot of people think The Nun is a bad movie. I didn't think it was a bad movie. I didn't think it was good. I didn't think The Nun was a good movie, but I didn't think it was bad. There was rede redeeming qualities in The Nun. Um, I felt there were some scenes that genuinely scared me. The scene where the pastor got buried, that made me uncomfortable. Um, the, the 
and I know that we're talking about jump scares here, but the jump scares here, here like when she was wandering through the tunnels and we saw the nun following her and, and you know, those tunnel scenes. I know they're still jump scares, but they were done more effectively. They were done more effectively, more cinematic, and they were just more interesting to watch. Um, I definitely felt the stakes were higher in this movie. You know, people died in the beginning, and you felt that, that anybody could die at any given time. So you really felt like there was a different level of threat in this movie than you get in some of the other Conjuring Universes movies. Not a good movie still. I mean, not a bad, but still not a good movie. It, it was it was boring. It drug. Um, there was def... <coughs> Excuse me. There was definitely parts of this movie that... that didn't feel necessary and that's a bad thing when the movie's only 90 minutes long you know if you have a two hour and 45 minute movie and you feel that there's some things in it that weren't necessary that's not so bad but when you're having when you have a movie that's 90 minutes long and you still feel like there's stuff that could have been cut that's not a good thing that's going to make the pace of the movie feel slow feel bad feel just yeah it's not good so Number four is The Nun. And like I said, The Nun and Annabelle Comes Home, I would kind of put as just meh movies. Just okay movies. Not good, not bad. Just kind of there. Six and Seven, Curse of La Llorona, and Annabelle, those are bad movies. These top three, these are movies I like. These are good movies. Number three, Annabelle Creation. Annabelle Creation is a good movie and it was such a surprise after Annabelle. I almost didn't even go see Annabelle creation in the theaters to be honest with you. I didn't like Annabelle at all but I read some reviews and I was like okay this is sounding like it's better. And I went and saw it and I was genuinely pleased. I like this movie a lot. This is a really good movie. It still relies on jump scares quite a bit but you also feel this a sense of threat in this movie. The stakes seem high. This seems like um, it's a it's a conjuring movie where where the good guys are, are in real peril so that's what I liked about it and and you also have that same sense in the top two movies in this franchise where you really feel peril you really feel danger you know the, the threat is tangible so to speak so number three is Annabelle creation number two is the conjuring so the conjuring was the, obviously the first movie in the Conjuring franchise and it was it scared me I mean you know I, I don't believe in, in, in hauntings I don't believe that somebody can die and, and their spirit can stay behind and haunt I, that's just not a belief set that I have if you believe that that's fine I, I have no problem with people who believe in, in ghosts I have no problem with people who don't believe in anything I don't believe that somebody can die and then become a ghost. However, I do believe that hauntings can exist in the forms of demons. That's just something that I believe. And when you have movies that approach hauntings from that um, from that perspective, it scares me. It, it makes me think. It, it, I mean, I'm not like terrified in the theater, shaking, but I'm into it. I'm into it. My fear level, my tension is, is elevated. And The Conjuring did that. The Conjuring did that really well. And if The Conjuring failed, this whole universe would have fell flat on its face. But The Conjuring didn't. It had a, had a, had a great story, a great uh, set of leads in The Warrens, uh, Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson. And it just created the foundation for a franchise that was just gonna grow and expand, which frank frankly, most of this franchise isn't all that good, to be honest with you. But it's still growing and it's ultra successful. Even the ones that aren't good are making a ton of money. And that's because Blumhouse is doing these movies for like five to 10 million each. If you can make a movie for five to 10 million and it grosses hundred million dollars worldwide heck even if it only grosses 80 million dollars worldwide 
you are making bank. And that's what's happening here. They, they're, they are going to continue on with this franchise because even the bad ones are making money because the budget is so low. So Conjuring was number two. Good movie. Great start to a franchise. A franchise that hasn't always lived up to, 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 uh, to where it started. But one movie did li live up to where the first one started. In fact, one movie exceeded the first one. And that is The Conjuring 2. The Conjuring 2, in my opinion, is the best movie in the Conjuring universe. And again, it centered around Vera Faminga and Patrick Wilson, the Warrens, um, helping to rid a, a, a family of, um, of a demon. I love the fact that it started in Amityville, right? The second one started in, in Amityville, so we don't actually get to see the Warrens take on probably the most famous haunting in all time. We saw it a little bit in the beginning, but that wasn't the the the, the um, plot of the movie. It was just where we started. Um, but seeing this girl being haunted, uh, this girl being possessed, and, and seeing the, the demon pretend to be this old man that used to live in the house, and it's not really the old man who used to live in the house, and just seeing the games that this demon played with this family and the way that the uh, the Warrens went at attacking this thing, it was just a phenomenal movie. It was so good. The storytelling, the narrative, the twists and the turns that it took. This is the movie that introduced the nun. Remember? It introduced the nun. And and the nun was not the, the main... Um, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of the nun in this movie, but it felt, it felt like it made sense. It felt like it made sense because they were introducing the nun in service of the story. And yeah, the nun popped up several times. The nun ended up having a, a rather significant role to play in The Conjuring 2, but you know, the screen time that the nun got, I think it was Valak, right? Valak. The screen time that Valak got in The Conjuring 2 versus what she got, he or she, whatever, got in The Nun was a lot less. But it was more impactful because it was a better movie. The narrative was better. The story was better. So I love The Conjuring 2. I think it's a great movie. It's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Could be, could be my favorite um, haunting movie of all time. I don't know. The first Poltergeist has a special place in my heart. But, uh, yeah. So that's my ranking of the Conjuring movies. Let's go ahead and recap. Number seven is Annabelle. Number six is The Curse of La Llorona. Number five, Annabelle Comes Home. Number four is The Nun. Number three, Annabelle Creation. Number two is The Conjuring. And number one is The Conjuring Part Two. How would you rank The Conjuring movies? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm really working to get to that 100 subscribers, and you can help me by subscribing. And thank you so much for being here at the LQ Review, where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you later.